Hi everyone, and welcome to your first video lesson for Math 207. Now, as I mentioned in the course introduction, this course is all about calculus, but in higher dimensions. Mostly we're gonna be working in two or three dimensions, but sometimes in general, we'll be working in n dimensions. Now, where have you seen those ideas before? Probably in your linear algebra course. There you talked about vector geometry and the geometry of higher dimensional spaces. And that kind of knowledge is going to be essential moving forward in our course. So our first job for this term is to review some of the ideas from linear algebra. I'm going to go pretty quickly because I suspect that this is something many of you have seen before. But don't worry, we're going to slow down a bit when we get to the new calculus content at the end of this week. If you want more information on this section, please visit sections 10.1 and 10.2 of the textbook. Okay, so our discussion today is going to be about vectors. And the idea behind vectors is quite simple. If we're working in, say, R2, the two-dimensional Cartesian plane, we could represent any point using a pair of numbers AB. But alternatively, we could represent that point in space using an arrow that starts from the origin and ends at that point. We call this a vector, and we denote it by some letter with a little hat on top. So maybe I'll call this V hat. Its two components are A and B. It's telling us to move A units along the X axis and B units along the Y axis. Now we could represent this using either a column or some angled brackets, and I'm actually gonna use both throughout the term. Now you may wonder why on earth are we going through all this trouble of rewriting this point using one of these arrows? What do we gain from this? Well, it turns out that there are some very nice algebraic operations that we can do in R2 or R3 that are very nicely visualized when we represent this point using a vector. There are two basic types of operations that you can perform and visualize with vectors. They are addition and scalar multiplication. To show you how these work, suppose that we have two vectors, V with components V1 and V2, and W with components W1 and W2. We're going to define the sum of these two vectors to be the vector whose components are obtained by adding the individual components of v and w. So my first component is v1 plus w1. My second component is v2 plus w2. Now the cool thing is that we can visualize this in our Cartesian plane by connecting up the vectors v and w tip to tail. If I append W to the tip of V, and I follow this path here to the terminal point, well, that's going to be the sum of our two vectors. The vector from the origin to that point is V plus W. Pretty cool, huh? It turns out it doesn't matter what order you do this. You could have alternatively connected V to W instead of W to V. Our second operation is scalar multiplication multiplying a vector by a real number. Well, the way that we're gonna define this is just by multiplying the components of our vector by that real number. So for example, if we wanna consider 2v, we're gonna get the vector 2v1, 2v2. That's gonna stretch out the vector v by a factor of two in the xy plane, giving us this vector that you see here. We could also contract the vector by multiplying it by something less than one and greater than zero. For example, half V would look something like this. Now, one important thing to point out is that if you multiply a vector by a negative number, it's gonna switch direction. So if V is the vector you see here, then minus V is gonna be pointing in the opposite direction. Once we've defined addition and scalar multiplication, we can start combining vectors in all sorts of ways. For example, if you have vectors v and w, you can consider combinations like 2v plus 3w or v minus 4w. The possibilities are endless. Now it turns out that in R2, you can actually form any vector you like using combinations of two very special vectors, which we're going to refer to as i and j. I is the vector 1, 0. It points in the x direction and has length 1. J is the vector 0, 1. It has the same length but points in the positive y direction. These two vectors are known as the standard basis vectors in R2. And like I said, they can be used to form any other vector you like. 
For example, suppose you want to form the vector minus 2, 1. Well, that's really a combination of minus 2 times i plus 1 times j. And just as we did on the last slide, we can visualize this in our Cartesian plane. It looks something like this. Now, there's nothing special about the vector minus 2, 1. In general, the vector ab can be written as a times i plus b times j. This gives us a new way to represent vectors in R2. Folks, up to now, our discussion has been rooted exclusively in R2, but there's nothing that we've talked about that can't easily be extended to R3 or, in general, Rn. Here's the situation for R3, our three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system. Instead of two axes, we now have a third. We have the x, y, and z axes. To orient ourselves in this space, we follow the right-hand rule. It says that if you stick out your thumb, index finger, and middle finger from your right hand, then your thumb will be pointing in the direction of the positive z-axis, your index finger will be pointing in the direction of the positive x-axis, and your middle finger will be pointing in the direction of the positive y-axis. Go ahead, give it a try. Just like in R2, we can actually form all vectors in R3 using combinations of a set of standard basis vectors. Perhaps not surprisingly, we now have to introduce a third vector. We have i hat, which points in the direction of the positive x-axis, it's 1, 0, 0. j hat, which points in the direction of the positive y-axis, 0, 1, 0. And now k hat, which controls our height. It points in the direction of the positive z-axis and has coordinates 0, 0, 1. Just like before, every vector can be written as a combination of these three. For example, the vector 5 minus 2, 3 can be written as 5i minus 2j plus 3k.